All right, so today we're going to be taking a look at a motherboard. So I've been tinkering around with my computer, and when I built it, my 5900X, I actually used this motherboard over here, which is the MSI B550 Mortar. It's been a pretty good motherboard. It's work. It's gotten the job done. But I have found slight limitations in it, and primarily it's just an overclocking. It doesn't have the beefy enough VRMs and... Stability does become slight of issue and you know, it is MATX and I knew that when I bought this and in fact when I bought this motherboard I was considering uh, just Sticking with a MATX build but decided to change plans just like any enthusiast does You just change your mind. So out with this one and in with this one Asus Tough Gaming X570 Pro Wi-Fi. Why did I go with this? Well, Strix motherboards are strictly too expensive for years i've always used the strix they have been awesome but golly right now they're like at 300 plus dollars uh, the one i would typically get is about 340 dollars and that's a little too much this one we paid 199 us dollars for it and i think it'll fit the build for what i'm trying to do all right so let's open this up and even though the bat box is not as fancy as the strix per se it's still rather decent so in here we have our antennas. And on a side note, just talking about the MSI mortar motherboard, the antennas on those are just horrible. They just have those little ones that screwed into the back, they get in the way, and the range on them is just not there. So definitely don't recommend that aspect of the motherboard. In fact, on that MSI motherboard, I actually used the old Strix antenna that I had lying around, and that's how I was able to get my Bluetooth from a good distance so I could play my Xbox controller on my computer. But just a little advice, that's another story. Let's go ahead, let's pop this out. Let's put this over here to the side and let's see what goodies Asus has given us. Of course, our M.2 screws, so I have a video out. Put these on the motherboard, even if you're not using them. You don't wanna lose these. Our rear IO, some new SATA connectors, a manual, and believe it or not guys, manuals are still very helpful. I mean, nothing like, um, enjoying a good read and you'll learn a lot about your bio so definitely something to consider a uh, certificate of reliability that is quite hilarious that it talks about that tough land guard all this good stuff thermal shock test all that hilarious a cd toss these because drivers are newer by now what is this this is i don't know what this is for use single sided i don't know some type of tape Stick this pad onto the existing M.2 pad. Hmm. Something I might have to research and read about. And of course, your battery decals, which are lovely. So, I mean, pretty much just for advertising on their look, I guess you could put this on the battery, just gives it a look, but um, this is not the color scheme I'm going for, so I'm not gonna use that. So let's put this back in the box. We'll leave the other stuff out because we are gonna use that. And let's make this our test bench for now. And these, I typically toss these because, well, I don't know what you would use these for. All right, our motherboard. Let's open her up and let's take a look at it and let's talk about it. So like I said before, I went MATX and now I'm going ATX on it. Decided to go with this motherboard. And let's talk about this one in particular because, believe it or not, I didn't know there was a difference between this one and another variant. And let's talk about that in a sec. So now, Asus has two versions of the X570 Tough Gaming, and I didn't realize it until I just looked at it, and then I was like, oh, there's a difference, and this was the one to go with. So there's the Pro, which this one is the Pro, and there's the Plus. So let's talk about the differences between the Plus and the Pro. First off, the Plus was actually released in July of 2019 and cost $199. The Pro was released in September of 2020 and cost $219. But I got this for $119 because I think they had it mislabeled on it. So I don't know, it works for me, not complaining about that. So now the biggest differences between the Tough Pro and the Plus. Number one, the memory frequencies. This will actually support memory frequencies up to 4600, 4800 and 5100. You have the 2.5 gigabits per second LAN, has the BIOS flashback button. So if you're looking to buy one of these motherboards and you have a Ryzen 9 5000, this is actually gonna make it easier to flash the BIOS because if you don't have a CPU, uh, an older gen CPU, then guess what? 
uh, you're not going to be able to get this running with your new CPU. So that is one thing to consider that's a plus when buying this motherboard. Well, not a plus, a pro. Yeah. What else does it have? It has onboard USB 3.2 which the plus does not. So you have this, and this was the biggest thing that I was looking for because I have this on my case that I'm using. So that port would just be dead and useless. And I do use this. So that's another thing. And let's see, is there anything else that I could think of? Um, yeah, that's about it. Those are the only differences really that you're paying for. It has the same Wi-Fi 6. If you go to the plus, pro, uh, plus, plus, plus or the pro, and that is about it. So those are the two differences. So let's talk a little more about this motherboard in particular. So like I said, it's the X570 Pro Wi-Fi and it's one of the cheaper X570 options that you can get. The Strix is the more expensive one, but literally the next step up Strix for as far as the X570 platform is gonna bump you up like another $100. I think the one I want it for, cause I like to have the Wi-Fi for it, is like an extra $120, $130. So, and typically the Strix ones, I have found in my opinion, they overclock better, beefier VRMs, better cooling on that. They're just great boards. I love Asus, but I hate that the prices have gone up. It is what it is, so we're gonna give this a shot. So now the, uh, the board includes the capable VRMs that are able to handle the power hungry Ryzen 9 5900. They use a lot of power. And if you don't have decent VRMs on them, you do run into st uh, stability issues that I have found. Now the B550 from MSI, their VRMs a little bit of weak sauce on them. I was able to be stable with it, but honestly, if you wanna get some good overclocks, this is actually something that you need to consider and is definitely the way to go. Now, both M.2 sockets support PCI, uh, PCI Express 4.0. The bottom has your heat sink. So if you're running a, a PCI 4.0 M.2 on that, you definitely wanna make sure that you do have a heat sink on it because those do run a little hot. So this would be the ideal one. But if you don't, if you're gonna run two of them, then the other one, make sure you have a good heat sink up for over here and all that. And another thing to consider with this, you see how close this is. If you're gonna use one of those massive uh, air coolers, make sure the heat sink is not that cool, is not that tall, because I have seen where it actually runs into some issues where it does hit it. So just some clearance issues. Just kind of keep that in mind. Now, there are some aftermarket ones that are a little tall and beefy, but just something to consider. Now the next thing is, and the big di biggest difference between this and the B550s is these have a, a fan on them, just to kind of cool the chipset over there. And these, from what I've been reading and from what I've heard and experienced, these are actually not as loud as people may have thought they were. So they're pretty much silent for the most part, and they just provide that efficient cooling for this chipset area over here. Now, RGB, as far as RGB goes, we have our RGB right over here, and this is about most of the RGB that you will get on it. The one thing about this motherboard is it's yellow and black, and that was the one thing I was not a fan of. Um, it is what it is. I'm not going for any RGB theme, but I was kind of uh, sticking with the whole black and gray look on it, so it kind of throws it off a little bit. Something to consider is, I mean, you could repaint that and everything, but then you run into the issue of voiding your warranty. We're just gonna leave it as is, and I think this will be fine for what we're trying to do. And that's pretty much it, our USB, right over here is right down there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight SATA drives. So you have more than enough RGB hookups. So you can hook in your RGB over here. And in the back, you have seven USBs. So I know there are some complaints that, you know, some people rather have more than that, but hey, it is what it is on that. And that's it. This is the board. Let's go ahead, let's pop our CPU in it. Let's see if out of the box this has have Ryzen um, 9 5900X support. If not, then we'll flash it with this and we'll document it. We got her set up and typically you don't have to do this with the CPU in and the graphics card in, but I decided to do it just because I wanna make sure everything works and I got some other testing things that I need to do with this. So pretty much what you're gonna do is you're gonna to go to Asus website, kind of like what we talked about in the MSI video where I did theirs, download their latest bios over here. And then what you'll do is um, when you download it and let's get back over here, let's try to show you, you'll have something that says bios renamer you'll double click on that and when you double click on that it's going to rename it to the proper file that it needs to be read at so you press enter and you'll see the name that it tells you that's going to do I don't know if that comes out let's see zoom yeah so you put in a USB uh, flash drive you need to have it formatted to FAT32 and it's preferably you want a USB 2.0 thumb drive for it as that's what ASUS recommends so when you come over here you're gonna put it in this top port right over here 
and I've already went ahead and did this just because, well, I forgot to turn the camera on. You're going to hold this button for three seconds. When you hold this button for three seconds, if it flashes five times and then goes solid, that means that either something's wrong with the file, something's not working properly, you might have in the wrong port. But it needs to be the one right next to the PS2 port. So hit that, and once it starts doing, you'll see that this light is blinking. When this light stops blinking, that means that you've it's... Um, been flashed to the BIOS that you wanted to. And this is probably the best way to do it if you don't have an older generation CPU so you can flash it traditional ways. Once that finishes flashing, it's done, you should be good to go. Looking at the website and the forums, this could take up to eight minutes. At this point, do not turn the computer on, don't do nothing, just let that thing continue to flash. It'll stop flashing as soon as it's done. So let's let this do this real quick and then we'll turn this on, we'll take a look at the BIOS and that should be a wrap. All right, it has stopped flashing, so we're good to go. So we can go ahead and we can fire this thing up. All right, let's go ahead, let's pop this on. And this is always the most exciting part of any build. It's like a bomb. You feel like it's gonna blow up or something or whatever. So let's go ahead, let's power it on. See what it starts doing. Let's hit the DL button like a hundred times because that always makes the difference. And let's watch our amber light turn blue. Please turn blue. Hey, there we go. All right. And we are booted up, so we're looking good. So all right, let's just take a look at these BIOS real quick. So this is our BIOS settings. Nothing too fancy about tough BIOS. I mean, that's just the way they do it. It's kind of like the Strix in a sense, but I guess their own little color code for it. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So the BIOS took pretty simple. As you can see, it's very easy to do that. That's probably going to be the best way if you're buying this and you're buying the CPU. These boards, I guess, because maybe they're old stock or they just haven't been shipped out or the new stuff hasn't come out yet as far as these boards being equipped with the proper BIOS. So if you buy it, this is what you're going to have to do. Overall, I think it's going to be a good board. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play with the bio settings and do all that stuff and I'm sure you guys could try to figure it out and do what you got to do. But yeah, I just wanted to give a review on this motherboard, just showcase this, showcase this motherboard a little bit and what you need to do to get the BIOS running on it. So that's pretty much it. So comment down below, let me know what you think about this motherboard. BIOS flashing, you got to love those buttons. If you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe if you're not. And as always, we'll see what we come up with next.